Hello everyone, and welcome back to PokePaint, the series where I draw Fakemon for my fan-made Pokemon region, Trapor. As an overall update, I think I've settled on a name for our hypothetical Pokemon games. I'm thinking something like Pokemon Abyss and Pokemon Expanse, referring to the box legendaries that we haven't made yet, but that I plan to make for this region. Right now, I'm thinking that one will be found at the bottom of the ocean, i.e. Abyss, and the other in the sky. Expanse. Sort of like a Lugia Ho-Oh situation. Last time we earned our second gym badge and bought a surfboard from the surf shop in order to traverse the multitude of upcoming water routes. And in doing so, we passed through the open sea gate into this region's version of the wild area. I also left a rival battle cliffhanger at the end, but in the interest of pacing, I'm going to leave the explanation of that for the end of this video. This wild area encompasses most of the inner ocean of Trapor, and it would be a pretty much free roam section of the game. And although there's a recommended order for the upcoming gyms, I have it set up in a way that at this point, you could challenge the next five gyms in any order. The recommended order by level cap would be Dark, Fighting, Electric, Fire, and Ghost. I think. I might tweak that list uh, before the end. <laughs> On top of that, the wild area itself would be free roam, with small islands, sea caves, and coral reefs to explore. The next two videos will be specifically about this wild area. Uh, this one will cover all of the new and returning Pokemon that can be found in the ocean, while the next one will probably go over the Pokemon that can be found on the many islands. The returning ocean Pokemon are as follows. Traporian Pincurchin and Sunolphin, the Wengull and Pelipper line, Staryu and Starmie, Aracuda and Barrascuda, and Corsola. In the open oceans, Wishiwashi school form will be found, while near the beaches and coral reefs it will appear in its single form. We also have Inkay and Malamar, and Mantike and Mantine, Horsey, Cedra, and Kingdra. Finally, Carvana will be found near the islands, and Sharpedo will patrol the open ocean. This list, of course, is probably going to be added to, uh, but for now, those are the returning Pokemon. Along with that list, we now have some new Pokemon. This is an idea that I had since, well, pretty much the beginning. Just after New Year's in 2021, uh, when I was making the list for this region, I had a concept of an electric and ghost type jellyfish Pokemon. But for like a year, I've had a really solid idea of what this Pokemon's gonna look like. And everything from color palette to its shape in the final form just came out exactly like I wanted, which makes me really happy. I also used a little trick that the Pokemon company uses to make their designs more visually interesting, and that is with Pokemon that can be found in the water. In their official art, they have a shallow water texture, as if reflected sunlight is hitting this Pokemon's skin. It's a pretty cool and simple effect that I used to varying levels of success with each of these designs in this video. And even if I don't do it with Pokemon designs in the future, it was a pretty good practice in overlaying and texturing. Jelectric, the sea ghost Pokemon. Back in ancient times, explorers thought Jelectric were actually ghosts, and that they brought bad luck with them. However, when they're brought on land, it is clear to see that their bodies are actually made of an insulating goo, and they of course bring no bad luck. Although I've had the design for Jelectric down for like a year and a half, I had no idea what its evolutions might look like until I made them this week. This is particularly true for the second form. I used a trick for all of these actually, that is found in a lot of real ghost Pokemon where the line art is not done in black, but rather in a color similar to the body. This is to give it a sense of transparency where there really isn't one. Its name was also a bit of a challenge to come up with, but after doing some research, I settled on the roots of the name being based on a type of German water ghost called a Nixie, and therefore this Pokemon would be called Nixaleki, the sea ghost Pokemon, and the evolved form of Gelectric. They have long tendrils that glow at night and always point in the direction of the current. Using that knowledge, sailors used to navigate using the wild Nixaleki to guide their way. This final form was one that I just kind of winked, to be honest. Because initially, I wasn't super happy with Nixaleki, and that one I tried to plan out pretty extensively beforehand. So I just started drawing, and I came up with a design that I kind of accidentally absolutely loved. And then my computer crashed without saving. Yeah, that didn't feel super good. Anyways, I restarted the next day and this clear sense of direction with my design, along with a night to think it over, let me come up with one of my favorite designs yet. 
The other nice behind the scenes thing is that due to the crash, I happened to have to reset my palette settings and I realized that I had the resolution set really low. So I brought it from 1000 up to 3000, which lets you get a little better texture in a piece and some smoother line art, which feels really nice. Its name is a portmanteau of Cumulonimbus, the cloud precipitation, and Nixie, the German water ghost, Cumulonix. Cumulonix, the sea ghost Pokemon, and the evolved form of Nixalucky. This Pokemon float around in the depths like massive rain clouds. Despite their giant size, they are relatively docile and less provoked. Therefore, massive groups of defenseless Pokemon form biospheres around them like portable coral reefs. Although they are quite gentle, when they are attacked, they release a blast of energy so powerful that seafarers liken it to the submarinean version of a thunderstorm. This next Pokemon will be a regional form of Magikarp. Since every Pokemon region has a fish Pokemon, I thought of turning one of the most common types of fish in the Virgin Islands, the Yellowtail Snapper, into a Pokemon. And after a little while of trying to develop an actual interesting concept out of an honestly quite mundane fish, I came up with the idea of making a Magikarp form. And that, that way I could do my original idea while also having it eventually evolve into something, well, actually interesting, a Gyarados. So I used the body patterns and general shape of the real fish to inform the color palette and, well, the shape of this regional form. Magikarp, the fish Pokemon. Due to dietary changes, Magikarp from the Trapor region have a different appearance. They have thinner scales, but a firmer barbed ridge on the tips of their fins. Don't let this fool you, however. They are still absolutely useless. They will school if scraps are thrown into the water. Their favorite types of scraps are bread. I threw in that little part about the bread at the end because it's related to one of my memories that I have about the fish. When I was on vacation in the BVI one time, I was bit by one of these fish when my dad and I brought bread to attract them while snorkeling. Um, and I guess I wasn't ripping it apart fast enough for this fish's taste. <laughs> Unrelated to that little side tangent is the original Gyarados form. Although I didn't have a huge inspiration for this first version of the design, making it just vaguely serpentine and visually similar to the Magikarp I made, I later, while doing research for the script of this video, thought about the oarfish and how they are thought to be the explanation of what people actually saw when they thought they saw sea dragons back in the day. So I took those visual characteristics and transformed them into a Gyarados form. Even though I did throw away a lot of the similarities between the Magikarp form, I kind of thought about it and Gyarados is supposed to look super different to Magikarp so it all works out. Gyarados, the abysmal Pokemon. In the ancient past, this Pokemon would sink ships if explorers crossed into its territory. Although that can happen in the modern day, it is far less common in the heavily traveled routes of Trapor. Their appearance has changed in this part of the world due to many reasons, but the biggest is environmental. Well, that's the five new Pokemon that we have to add to the Pokedex this week. Now that that's done, we finally have some time to run through the rival battle that takes place at the open sea gate. The classic rival shenanigans takes place, the whole, oh you have two badges, I have three, and so forth. Tobias has three Pokemon here. He starts out the battle with his trusty Dragonsect that evolved from his Wurmpa, at level 19 with the ability Intimidate. The moveset has changed since you last encountered him. It consists of Bug Buzz, Double Team, Dual Chop, and Gust. The second Pokemon in his crew is his new Chuara at level 19. With the ability Tangled Feet and a moveset of Bite, Roar, Odor Sleuth, and Play Rough. This final Pokemon, of course, depends on your starter choice, but if you chose a Wordle like me, he sends out a level 21 Crow Kick. With the ability Overgrow, he has the moveset Leaf Blade, Double Kick, Bulk Up, and Double Team. If he chose Full Leap, his Kamember. We'll have the moves Flame Wheel, Lick, Smoke Screen, and Hex. If you chose Embellion at the beginning of your journey, he'll have an Armortal with the moves 
Water Pulse, Protect, Withdraw, and Smackdown. The prize for winning this battle is access to the wild area of Trapor and the next five gems. And, you know, the satisfaction, of course. <laughs> so that's going to do it this week. In the next few episodes, I plan to do some more wild area content and probably cover some of the gems. As always, this is my updated team at the level cap of the rival battle. Let me know yours in the comments below, because I love seeing the combinations that you all come up with. And if you enjoyed this video and want to see more like it, then subscribe and turn on the bell to get notified when I upload next.